Good morning. My name is Diane Reese and uh, a long distance friend of the Whitefish Bay Garden Club based in Houston, Texas. And as luck would have it, who's also with me today is Winnie Davis, one of the past presidents of the Whitefish Bay Garden Club. And we're here to talk about the history of the club and some of the great milestones that got accomplished over under her tenure as president and um, some of the great things the, the the group was able to accomplish in the early years of the organization. So good morning, Miss Winnie. Good morning. So tell me about um, well, how you decided to start or how the White Fish Bay Garden Club first came into existence. Well, my mother and father-in-law lived at 6110 North Bay Ridge Avenue, and they had a young family that moved into their next door house, and her name was Jesslyn Small. And she was a, a Milwaukee girl, but when she decided she wanted to join a garden club, she asked the uh, garden club that was affiliated with a museum there if she could join. And she was told that she needed to be invited, that you had to have a cer certain number of members author, you know, support you. And she was very upset. And so I'm standing there seeing Jocelyn upset. And so I said, well, form your own garden club. And she said, well, she didn't know how to do that. And I said, well, that we can, I can do that. So we, I said, what we have to do is we have to get 10 people. So we, between the two of us, we got 10 people. And our first meeting was at Jocelyn's. And we decided at that particular point that obviously we needed more people. So our second meeting, we each of the ten invited another person, so there were twenty. And with that, we were off and running. Well, so what ideas did you have around activities? What were some of the early goals and things that you tried to tackle with the Garden Club? Well, many of us were first-time homeowners, and we liked, we were interested in, you know, in making our homes look interesting and pretty. And Milwaukee is a has a tremendous park system. And so there was lots of resources that we could tap into that were very helpful. And um, we did not do, we were not seriously considering that we would be flower arrangers, but at the point where we, the club decided that they wanted to be affiliated with the uh, Federation of Garden Clubs, they had certain flower show requirements. So they were sort of, they pushed us into that capacity. So tell us what the Garden Club was like in the very early years, um, as you just came into existence. What milestones did you try and take on? And what year did you start exactly? Well, to the, I'm not absolutely sure. The one date that I have in my mind is I remember sitting at a meeting when I was president and telling people that their president had gone to seed. And that was when I announced that we were expecting our third child. So he was born in 1960. So I would say the club started 57, 58. And um, I don't remember specifically which of those years. What, things did you, what challenges or what goals did you set for yourselves at that time? People just, we just, um, used our own resources and, you know, what was available to us. So we sort of grew like Topsy. So, and um, our first flower show um, came about really with the support of the man who lived across the street from us. We lived on the corner of Lexington and Charlotte and right across the street from us was O.K. Johnson and he was president of the Whitefish Bay State Bank, which was on the uh, Silver Spring and he suggested that we might like to have a flower show at the bank which we did do and that uh, was exciting and fun. The group has grown considerably since then how did all of that come into existence and what was what what were some of those key moments that that triggered that happening? Well um, obviously there were the, one of our members was Isabel Lilly and she was a woman who was um, 
deeply inspired uh, by the kind of uh, situation that, that Rachel Carson expressed in her book, The Silent Spring. And the club read The Silent Spring. And we all decided, and we didn't necessarily do it as an official group, but I know that everybody was affected. And Isabel was particularly challenged by this. And from that, she got the idea um, that it would be wonder we should establish some sort of area within the Milwaukee area that would support um, good land management. Mm -hmm. And from that, the River Edge Center uh, came into being. Well, but River Edge Center, um, that, that's significant significant contribution of land, significant um, investment by people. How did, how did that come into existence? How did that happen? Well, uh, Isabel was the kind of a person that uh, she inspired, she was inspired herself and she carried her enthusiasm and interest to other people. And the, um, it became, in the climate around the, around the area was supportive of this. So she was able to bring these people together and there was property that became available that uh, along the river and um, those people, uh, there were people that took the property and gave the concept over to the people who were working on the idea of a nature center and uh, it just, again, drew lots of support. Grew from there. Right. Yeah. So what vision did you have for the nature center? What, what, wh how did Isabel create that, that compelling need for people about um, that this is an important thing to do? Well, there was an important uh, consideration to conserve the land and to make sure that the land was used uh, not commercially or, or to have houses built on it, but that it would be saved in a natural environment. And then also that it was a wonderful outdoor laboratory to teach other people and children particularly. And the, uh, over the years, River Edge has excelled at that. The children from schools around regularly, there's regular classes and they do participate. Did you have any idea that River Edge was gonna become the educational resource that, it is, that it's known for today? I can't say we felt that it was assured. We certainly hoped that it would be. I think that that was Isabel's intent. And, but it's been the, at that time, it was the, the involvement of many people who are willing to, to put their time and their energy and their dollars uh, behind this. And I'm sure that has continued because these places don't just, they need support all the time. It isn't just getting started. Tell us what Isabel Lilly was like. Okay. Uh, what did you admire about her leadership style? What, what made her, her vision so compelling? Well, she was a very quiet person. She wasn't a dynamic speaker. She was not a dynamic leader per se, but she, she just radiated this enthusiasm and she was committed to this idea and she was able to to inspire other people with this so she was um she was the right person at the right time with the right concept so she, she just pulled it pulled the community get together and people together and it made it happen Sounds like you were a great team with your organizing skills and her um, passion for this mission. Well, I think we were. When looking back at it, I can see that um, that she made a tremendous contribution, and I seem to have really um, been the person who goes in and organizes. And uh, I don't have to do everything, but I do know how to delegate and uh, get other people to 
to work for the cause. Good. So, and it is that, that varying leadership. So I assume that that's part of what has contributed to the success of uh, the Garden Club over the years, of to been able to, to keep going? I am sure of that. I am sure of that because my experience has been if organizations provide an orderly way of, of transition of leadership and welcoming new people and welcoming new ideas and approaches, um, that makes the association successful. Uh, it's wonderful to have the traditions that you know you always do this and you always do that, but you cannot. Um, it's not life isn't static. You need to to grow. You need to change. And as we close out the interview. Is there a message or a specific thing that you would like to tell the existing club membership, the leadership? Well, my, my uh, word is keep at it. Uh, keep going, girls. Uh, you can do it. Try new things. Meet new people. Um, and dig a little deeper. Thank you. Thank you, Winnie. Okay, this is, this is me, this is Donna Hodgson, this is Jackie Miley, Rit Mitzi Hawkerston, Patty Steffel, Sylvia Miller, who is present with you today, and Isabel Lilly. And I be because this is April 18th, 1968, I believe that would be like our 10th anniversary.